daily devotional written to captivate your mind and bring you a unique, mystical, Christian, and historical perspective of God's work in this universe. Why did you call it the Book of Mysteries? <clears throat> because it's a book of mysteries. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's the only part that's not a mystery. Um, because I felt, first of all, I felt that believers, we n- need to be strengthened now. Mm-hmm. And they need to be strengthened. Mm-hmm. This is going to be very challenging times, tough times. And there's so much mm-hmm. of God. There's so much to be revealed. There's no mm-hmm. end to the mysteries of God. There's no end to the revelations of God. Mm-hmm. It exists on several levels. And that is that one, on one level, it's a book of mysteries. You could read it right through. You could look at the index and say, this mystery, that mystery, that mystery, hundreds of them. Secondly, it can be done as a devotional because it also has it. It's 365. So it's several things. And the other was I returned to the, to the format of the Harbinger in this sense, that it's revealed through a story. It's revealed that a man goes into the desert, a traveler, a disciple. He meets a man called the teacher. Every day the teacher takes him on an odyssey on mountaintops, in in caves, in in chambers of scrolls and mystical things. And every day he shares with him another mystery of God. And the the disciple writes it down. And so it's like the recording of the disciple. So because every day there was another mystery, that's why they're... So the person who's reading it is kind of taken on the journey, but it's it's also taking every day. Mm -hmm. So there are things in here. There are mysteries about the end times in here. There are mysteries Mm -hmm. on on heaven, mysteries on, on change changing your life, mysteries of time and space, mysteries of history, mysteries of every possible kind. And there's many things that, as far as I know, have never been revealed um, here before. So, so it, is, it is so packed. And the biggest challenge I had was, how do, I, how do I get this into one thing? And, you know, by God's grace, it happened. <laughs> so, it happened. Yeah. It sure did. It happened. And I really want to unveil the book. I really, it's the first time I'm seeing a real book. I, I want to give you... The first copy. Thank you. Here we go. <laughs> Grab my seeing his book for the first time. There it is. <laughs> the Book of Mysteries by Jonathan Carn. <laughs> what do you Thank think? Thank you. Oh, I like it. I, I mean, I, I, I know the content, but I have never. You know the, the first content. Book I have, this is the first and, book and I've seen. Look at the pages. Did you look at the edge? Yes. Can you see see this edge? You got to get it close up there. Yeah. You, see that? They're they're like something found <laughs> yes. in an old uh, an old trunk. You yeah. See, they, see the, the pages it, are the, uh, like of an old book. It's you, awesome. like, like you're discovering a book. They're almost like they're different yeah. sizes. It'd be like something yes. a really really old old book. Yeah, it's interesting. They did that, and I don't think they realized that in the book, one of the places the teacher takes the disciple is to a chamber of, it's the chamber of books, and there are books that look just like this, but they didn't realize that when they did the cover. I want to do it as if it was a treasure chest, you know, that you're opening up the, d- the deep mysteries of God. And um, yeah, this is the first time I've seen it. And also at the end of the book, at the end of every mystery, there is a mission the, the teacher gives the disciple, okay, now don't just hear, don't just get this in your mind, in your heart, but, but get it, this, this can change your life if you take the mystery and apply it to your life. So he records a mission as the teacher giving it, but it's really for the person reading it, that every mystery has a way to apply the mystery to change your life. You folks will be the first ones in America to be able to get be. this book. You will right. be, absolutely. And absolutely they're here, be. they're here. So a- absolutely. And I hope you'll get them, and I hope everybody watching will get them. And Rabbi is going to sign them for the people here, so they're very, that's what you get for coming here. That's right. You don't get a book signing uh, with Rabbi. But don't you love these pages, Rabbi? Have you seen these pages? Look at at how they are. Look. They're, they're like, it's like I found an old treasure book. It is. So we're the first ones that you can actually get the book. It's a hardback book. It's Beautiful. not a little thin paperback book. It mm-hmm. is something you'll keep in your library mm-hmm. forever. People are going to need this amazing, amazing book. To read this was, yeah. honestly, it was like my brain was woke up. Mm-hmm. Did you have a formula of how this mystery unfolds? The first page is don't have number, they have Roman numerals on them. Mm-hmm. They are part of the story. Right. But, but I want yeah. it, we wanted to keep Very the helpful. mystery, the page number for each one mm-hmm. is the day. Mm-hmm. So, so then there's something at the end too. Right. There, it ends. So, there's a, so but, the, but the first one is the encounter mm-hmm. of the 
traveler, the pilgrim, with this man called the teacher. Yes. And, and the, the, just I like in the Harbinger, the you yes. see the conversation between mm -hmm. the two. Mm -hmm. and, and That's the, under the beginning. We're That's under front. the beginning, yes, mm -hmm. and then the first part. So then the, the teacher, he, you know, the, you know, the man speaks, well, are, well, why are you on this journey? You know, where right. are you going? And then he invites him to come into the desert with him and other students and other students, other teachers, uh, to, to spend one year, one year starting right. there, with the teacher. So then, you know, and he lives on a place there, and then every day the teacher comes to, either comes to his room, or they meet, you know, in the chambers, and, and in each day, it's the back and forth, it, you, it's, the, it's the revealing, the teacher, in one page, the teacher, and again, I could have done almost a book on each page. And also, the other thing is that I didn't realize this, there are several times, because I also geared it, that if you did it at the beginning, you don't, you can start it any time of the year, because it's not, sure. it, it doesn't give you a date, it gives you a day. Mm -hmm. But if you start it in January, not that you have to, you know, but the interesting thing is that it will follow that if you go, at, say, around Passover, there'll be a thing on that. If you go on Pentecost, Shavuot, the oh, ninth wow. of Av, you'll have the thing on the, on the ninth of Av. But, but of several of them I didn't plan, and several of them turned out to be on the exact day oh, cool. without planning. <laughs> so Let they're on the exact hearing. day. I only found out at the end that several of them are on the day. It speaks about this on the day that it, that it happened. So, That's what God so does with you. These have all the, all the mysteries in them. Look so at you, that. you So you don't, not only you do you have to... to you can also read it through. You can also That's say, also. I want to look at just this mystery or that mystery. This is. So these are hundreds of mysteries here. Mm -hmm. so 365. You can also do it. Yeah. yeah, so you can actually, that's another way of reading it as, as well. As Could well. you go to page one page with one? me okay. of, of the mysteries, day one? Okay. Uh, it's called Infinity in a Jar. It starts out, it was morning. The teacher came to my room holding a little clay jar. You literally see the teacher coming in, not yeah. bringing a glass jar, but bringing something yeah. from the yeah. Bible days of a clay yeah. jar. Yes, I saw, and they and, and they also live kind of like the Bible, you know. Yeah. And one one of the things is that, and the things that well, I knew the mysteries that had to be revealed. But each time I said, Lord, give me a picture, give me what's going to happen, how are they going to do it? You know, this is one, one, you know, another one, you know, he's in a room and, he, and there's a menorah and they're lighting it, or another, there, you know, there's, there's so many things, you know, or he goes on a caravan journey, or there's, in the desert, there are tent dwellers, there are people who live in the desert, and in that, te in that camp, they witness the mystery of the bride and groom I because they're because they're living because they're living oh. as in the Bible. So it's, and so some of the mysteries are just that's it for that day. Yeah. But other mysteries are going to be developing throughout the book. The bride, the marriage, and the bridegroom is going to wow. come to. It's going to come from beginning to end to get to the end. It's the end of the marriage. It's the it's the wedding celebration. Other ones is a mystery of the eighth day, which is going to build up. There's the mystery of end. Oh. So some of them are yeah. going to be streams that are going to come again and again until they're going to build up until the end. You know. I so think the, the, the 365th one, the last <laughs> one, is powerful, powerful, powerful. It's Me called too. the two shall be one, Brilliant. and it's not just the marriage. It is mm -hmm. God and us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God's That's obsessed true. with weddings, <laughs> yeah. isn't he? The I mean, whole, he, he the, 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 the wedding is all about yeah. God and us. The whole Bible, for, think about the, the Bible from the beginning, man and woman, to the end, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. It's all the wedding. It's all the wedding. And, and that's why the enemy of our soul is hell-bent on destroying the marriage. That's right. Because That's the right. marriage is God's idea. That's right. Not only God's idea for us, but it's God's idea for eternity, for him That's and right. us. It turns my brain up. It wakes my brain up. <laughs> And then I go to thinking, and then I meditate upon mm -hmm. it. Now, infinity in a jar. You're talking mm -hmm. about the teacher comes into the room with a clay jar, and a question he said, can that which is little contain that which is big? Mm -hmm. And you say no. Well, I didn't, I didn't say no. He said, <laughs> he said yeah. Yeah. The, the student That's says no, says, no I answer. Can that which is finite encompass that which is infinite? No, I said again. But it can, he replied. How? He lifted the jar and removed the cap from its top. It can, he said. It can if vessel. it's an open vessel. Is that good? Yes. It can, he said. It can if it's an open vessel. A closed vessel can never contain anything larger than its own size. That's right. Forgive me, Rabbi. I'll, I'll, Rabbi Do it. You should be doing the audio version. No, really <laughs> <laughs> but an open vessel has no limitations. Amen. Oh. Oh. 
You don't know me. <laughs> oh. It now can contain the blowing of the wind or the outpouring of the rain. Mm. It could even contain the flowing of a river. Yeah. Do you want to, uh, it's your show, yeah. you're supposed to be talking. No, 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 yes. no, 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 no. You're, doing, you're doing great. It no. would take a long time to contain a river. It could take forever. But the principle is the same. Mm -hmm. And the reason you're showing me this, which is larger, that which you know or that which you don't know? That which I don't know, I would think. So then it's only wise that you seek that which you don't know. I guess, but how do you contain that which is bigger than you? Woo. That which is bigger than your ability to comprehend by becoming an open vessel, I said. Yes, said the teacher. Only by opening yourself up can you come to know that which you don't already know. And only by becoming an open vessel can you contain that which is greater than yourself. <laughs> My whole life, I've been made fun of. My whole life, I've had people say, oh, you're just, you're just this ignorant person who just keeps doing things. But I can open up mm -hmm. this vessel. Right. And my God will pour into it. That's right. You can do yes, all things yes, yes. through Amen. Christ. And only by becoming an opening, open vessel can you contain that which is greater than yourself. The truth is always greater than our knowing. Your mind and heart are finite clay jars, but the truth has no end. God has no end. The eternal is infinite. Always flowing like the river, I said. Yes, he said. But when the jar opens itself, it becomes unlimited. It can contain the waters of the river. So open now your mind, your heart, and your life. For it is only the open vessel and an open heart that can contain the infinity of God. And then the teacher gives the mission. You want to give the mission for yes. the day? <clears throat> Today, this is the, as he wrote, the writes down today, open your mind, your heart, and your life to that which you don't yet know that you might contain that which is greater than yourself. So this is this morning. <laughs> I felt my brain opening again. Wow, amen. That's why this is the first one, because this will be read by people who know the Lord, who don't know the Lord. Right. To give to people who don't believe anything, open, you have to open, start by opening your mind to mm -hmm. what you don't. And even people who have known the Lord for years, but stopped, have stopped seeking. Mm -hmm. This is why this is the first one, mm -hmm. because the first thing is to open, and then all the rest will the come. The world in. shuts you yeah. up, screws the lid yeah. on, yeah. and God opens up, and he wants to pour in. But you also have, at the, at the end of every page, you have scriptures yes. to back it up, yes. which I love. And you can go to the scripture then, and like this one, Isaiah 55, 1 through 9, Jeremiah 33, 3, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Yes. And it backs up. Yeah, yeah, every, every mystery has it. Yeah. And the ninth of Av, there the it is. Av. What page it's, is that on, honey? It's 211. 211th day of the year is probably the ninth of Av. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the ninth of Av mystery. Mm -hmm. But this, this is most complete I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. In simple. Yeah. yeah. But the, yeah. Ninth, the mo most complete teaching, and what, you know what it says? God knows every day, every hour, every minute. That's what, it, 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 I, maybe you wrote this for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe the Lord, I pray he, he wrote it you for know, me. Because it was, I, I, I believe this book is supernatural. Yes. I believe God anointed you to too. do this. You wrote part of it here. Mm -hmm. That's, he I goes up, up to his, the chambers yeah. upstairs here and he <laughs> writes. He, and wherever he goes, he's writing, <laughs> working, to. preaching. He never stops. This man, never stops. he's on a mission. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. That's right. And I'm going to pray over this book and everybody that orders it. Mm -hmm. Books don't always speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't really always speak. But this book as I've gotten into it in the last 24 mm. hours, it speaks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
That's and, what it and does. And at the, the end, there's a, there's a moment, there's a moment during, we don't say when, but some point, dur some point during that journey, the, the student, he receives the Lord. Now, but at the very end of the book is where he recorded what he did to re in receiving the Lord. So that's for anybody who reads the book who is not a believer, at the very end, it has not only an ending, it has his encounter, mm -hmm. and it, he, give, he, write, he records his prayer mm -hmm. so that anybody can get saved. Mm -hmm. That's the point, you know, as well as for the believer, the unbeliever. I started from the back. I don't know. I know you're supposed to start from the beginning. That's, but he, I always, that's the Hebrew version. Yeah, that's the Hebrew <laughs> version. That's right. I knew I had to have some Jewish in me. Page 364. Yeah, 364. Okay. And read us one paragraph, oh, would you? It's called blank. Home. Mm -hmm. How strange, said the teacher. We're born into this world. We'd never been anywhere else, and yet we never feel at home here. It's the only place we've ever known, and yet still, we're never quite at home within it. We're never at home with its pain and sorrows, with its growing old and dying, with its losses, its death, its imperfections, its darkness, its evils, and where nothing lasts and everything passes away. Even in the best of times and circumstances, Something's always missing. It can never fill our hearts. And the longer we're in this world, the less at home we are within it. That's the first paragraph called home. Isn't Boy, that that's true, a mess. That, Isn't that, that one's so a mess. Isn't that so true how you feel? Maybe we'll oh. start reading one a day on our show or something because they're so good. I just read that opening, that opening paragraph and I'm just out loud by myself going, that's. I've never felt at home anywhere. And you know how many people... And I try to think, well, maybe it was where I was living at the place. <laughs> so I wouldn't feel at home there. And I always want to go back to where I was born and raised. But then I go back and I'm not home there. Mm -hmm. I never feel at home. Yes, that's because we're not at home. Right. Because home, we, home there is a home. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. That's Because we're made for that. Wow. We're, and that's what that's going to lead to. That's what it to. leads that, to. That's when we're finally going to be home. Isn't it true? Yeah. Wow. And the children of Israel yes. in Egypt were not yeah. at home. You talk about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the picture of salvation is, is Israel in Egypt. It's Passover, you know. And mm -hmm. so they grow up in Egypt, but the whole point is, yeah. and they think it's their home they, right. and they're slaves, but it's not. No. And Passover wakes them up so that they can come home. Mm -hmm. Jesus, is, Yeshua, Messiah is our Passover. Right. That we are now coming home. We've never been there before, but when we, when we get there to heaven, it's going to be a thousand times more home. We're finally going to say, we're home. This is it. Take this is why breath. we weren't at home, because we had something better. We had something so much better. That's why we're not at home. We're not made for, for a world that passes away. We're made yeah. for eternity. Right. That's why it never worked, because we're made for something better. That's why we're longing, yeah. because it exists. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's in yeah. our heart. It's so good. You know, yeah. It's so deep, and it's how so many, wide. How many have really so never simple. really felt at home? on earth that you didn't quite belong <laughs> here. Raise your hand. Yeah. Raise your wave it at me. Let me see. And I've tried. Boy, that's a lot of people. That's I've most tried. everybody. Yeah. yeah. And this, this makes you feel like you belong in heaven. It yes. Does. And you do have a yes, place. Yes, do. It says, <laughs> it's about coming home. Mm -hmm. Coming home to God. Yes. And coming home to home. Yes. Can I read just yes. this last part? We're still on home, that page. <laughs> the place for which our hearts were made. Mm -hmm. The place of no more sorrows yes. and dying and death. No evil or imperfections in where nothing grows old anymore or passes away. The eternal, the promised land, heaven. But we've never been there before. Yes, said the teacher. But when we get there... Then for the first time in our lives, we'll be home. Wow. Yeah. I love what the teacher says here at the mission. You are not yet home. Live today in the light of that. Yeah. Set your heart away from that which is not home towards that which is. Amen. Well, this is an amazing book. God has given you an anointing for yeah. the word, for the Hebrew, yeah. <laughs> for yeah. the, you know, you've taken the very depth of the meaning of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't think I've ever said I'm, I'm in love with a book. I thought, oh, Rabbi's written a devotional? You know, after writing the <laughs> most amazing book that has shaken America, it, this is not a book to save America. Yes. This is a book to comfort you all the way to the pearly gates. Yes. Okay. This is the book that God has ordained. Rabbi, forgive me for doubting <laughs> you because I really, I like saying this. I guess that's when you get old, you like comfort zone. <laughs> and I wanted you to do part two mm -hmm. of your first the harbinger. book, The Harbinger. harbinger. Yep. Because I'm not a prophet, but I, also, I want to prophesy that you mm -hmm. will write mm -hmm. part two of The Harbinger. It will come. You will it? Will? It will come. It will come. Because it's there. Yeah, it will come. And the part two is the final judgment of America. Jonathan Kahn, the book of mystery. So it, and you haven't heard nothing yet. <laughs> huh. You know, I'm kind of taken back in a great way. It's like, wow, Lord, you just took over. Well, I've never, we, I've never read it since I wrote it. I've never seen it since it was there. This is the first right here. Yeah. And it, it's God's doing his own thing. Yes. And thank praise you the Lord. Lord, you know. Yeah. And he gets all the glory. And, and there are, and there are, pro, there's a lot of prophetic things there as well. End time prophecy as well and things like that. So you're, it'll be everything. It'll be everything. It's there. everything. But, it's yeah. it, it's but I'm everything. You know what it's going to do? It's, it's going to speak to everybody individually. That's, yes. that's it. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to zing in. Yeah. It's going to come in. It's those beautiful points that God's yeah. going to bring right into your heart and teach you and yes. love you. In a long time, I've never felt. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm totally blessed. God's Thank embraced you. me. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes. That's totally so blessed. awesome. The eternal yes. caring God. Yes. That's good. God's Th kind. That's, that's the that's the wonder. That's that's the real miracle of this yeah. book. Yeah. The yeah. ultimate mystery is God yeah. and his love. It's the mystery of our lives, yeah. you know. Wow. And when I hit the ninth of Av, <laughs> this is the the same dates yeah. that all these yeah. events took place. You say, yeah. well, what would that mean to me? It means that God, he's trying to say, this is supernatural. You know, these people thought they were killing Jews. They thought they were taking over. He said, I control them so much that they were doing it on the exact same day. Over and over and over and over again. Why did God allow that? To say, I'm still in control. Yeah. We don't get it sometimes, do we? Yeah, still in yeah. Control. Yeah, everything God does in some way has to do with our life. Everything he does, every mystery is ultimately it's got to be here. Yeah. So to the mind, it's the but it's to the heart and it's the life at the end. Yeah. Yeah. At, at I've the, got at, so much that I want to <laughs> talk to you about. <laughs> we did this and, week. And it's just babies. all I can say is everybody needs to get this book. Everybody needs to take it and digest it. This is for the mature Christian, really. It's for the thinking Christian. It's for the the person who really, really wants to get a little deeper in God. Yeah. Than, and I'm sure yeah. new Christians could even. Yeah. Read. I think yeah, it's going to be yeah. supernatural. Yeah. I do. And, I, and yeah. I think, don't you think it's going to be supernatural? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I believe how. it's going to speak to people. Yeah. And, and even people who, who don't believe, but they're open, you yeah. know, they can get saved and, and go on the journey. Go on the journey. On at, the, at, journey. The, at the end, you know, at the end, the teacher releases the disciple to go, you yes. know, but it's about the journey. Yeah. It's about the journey. Yeah. Could you go to page 21 by any oh chance? Boy. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea go. what I'm going to No. Nope. It's your new book. <laughs> page 21, The Heartbeat of the Miracle. Do you remember that one? I do. Um, this is a good one. This one, and, and there's, there's ones, you know, much more, I mean, the, the, to, the, to the mind and all this, mm -hmm. these, you're picking some of them which are to the heart very mm -hmm. much, but that's all part, it always goes there. You want me to read? I've never read it. I mean, uh, you want me to read? Yeah, uh, we want you to. We yeah, that would be awesome. Thank but you. But you can pick one. That you have one of your oh, favorite. Oh, no, I, I don't. I don't. You know, but they're um, all your children. Right? They <laughs> are. Yeah. We were sitting on two large stones at the base of a small mountain. 
The teacher leaned down to the ground, picked up a rock, and handed it to me. What do you feel, he asked. Nothing, I replied. A rock. Now put your hand on your neck. Do you feel anything? My heartbeat. But the rock has no heartbeat, he said. Of course not. The rock exists as a rock with no heartbeat. It retains its shape, its size, its consistency, with no need of a heartbeat. But you have a heartbeat. Every moment of your existence hangs on a heartbeat. The moment it stops, your existence is over. That's the difference between a rock and your life. God ordained it. Rocks just exist, but life never just exists. It must strive to exist, fight to exist. Your heart must keep beating every moment of your life. If, even if you do nothing, your heart beats. Even when you sleep, it keeps beating every moment that you can remain alive. If you waste your moments on earth, still it beats that you can waste your time. When you sin, when you gossip, when you covet and hate, still it beats while you do so. When you weep, when you give up hope, still it beats so that even in your tears, and despair, it still fights for you to live and to be able to cry. So the difference between my existence and that of a rock is your life doesn't just exist. It strives to exist. Your life is a miracle. Your every moment is a miracle. Your joys are a miracle. Even your tears are a miracle. Your life is the gift from God. Every moment is sustained by him. Every moment is a miracle. How does one apply this? You cease taking your life for granted. You stop wasting it, mistreating it, treating it as something less than the miracle it is. You cease to allow your life to be given to sin and what is less than God's will. You treasure the existence with which you were entrusted. You stop throwing away your moments. You treat your life and your time on earth as a treasure. You treat every moment as if there were a heart beating behind it, striving for that moment to exist. In short, you live a life worthy of every heartbeat. Wow. Oh. It's the mission. The mission. Live this day in the miracle of your existence. Take account of every heartbeat and make your moments worthy of each one. Is that good? It's so good. And then is the scripture good? is Psalms 139, 14 through 17. Live this day in the miracle of your existence. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, wow. Oh. This one next to it, I like that. <laughs> Everyone, I'm telling you. Every, but I it, love this explaining of which one? the footstool, oh, okay. uh, the, oh, the yeah. footstool world. Mm -hmm. And he explains mm -hmm. while the, why the world is God's footstool. Right. Yes. yes. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Because that lets us know there's a power bigger than you and me. Yes. And bigger than politics. Yeah. Yes. Bigger than these billionaires that are throwing their money and their weight around right now trying to, trying to move America into hell. Yeah. Yeah. In a nutshell, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it, it. The Lord says, heaven is my throne, mm -hmm. earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. And so what's it saying? Heaven is where God sits. He rests. His glory can be held in heaven because that's heaven. But he doesn't, put his, he doesn't rest on earth. He puts his foot on earth. He mm -hmm. touches down on earth. He, he says, my feet shall be there. So if we are children of God, mm -hmm. then we have to live, and we have to live in this same mystery, that we never put our full weight on earth. We never dwell, put all our weight, our, that everything's a problem. Everything that we, every problem we have yeah. is a footstool problem. Wow. Every, every, every concern we have is a footstool concern. We don't, but it's, it's, we're not mm -hmm. supposed to be, wrapped up and lost in our problems, we're yeah. supposed to put our foot on our problems. Right. So we're supposed to put our, our foot on uh, that because it's a footstool world. Yeah. And, that, and so heaven, so in the same way, we, that's what we do here. It's our feet. But where we dwell, we're to be dwelling in the heavenlies, even when we're now. It says you are seated here now in the heavenlies. That's just from one verse from God, you know. Right. The, so it's, that one's called the footstool world. That's just Beautiful. in a quick nutshell. You make these things, are, which is life, and God, so, that is so deep and so wide, you make it so simple for us to understand and to comprehend and get into our, our spirit, into our being. Because I believe, I believe God is like that. You know, lies are shallow, shallow and complicated. Mm -hmm. But the truth is simple and deep. It is. God is simple and deep. Yes. You know? Yeah. And so his, 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 you know, his mysteries, there's no end to how deep he is, you know. Oh. But... But they're also simple. If our heart is open, a child can get it. Yes. Yeah. I could just take you through page after page. The sea and the colors of heaven. Yeah. They're, they're all, they're going to touch you somehow. Mm -hmm. It yes. hasn't entered the minds of men. What God has. The things that God has yeah. prepared for those that yeah. love him. Yeah. This one and several of them are about how to see that now. 
how to end, one is called entering the heavenly dimension, how to live in the heavenly now, how to live a heavenly life now, no matter what's happening around you. That's what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. so, so several of these things are that even now we can experience things that are yet to come. Yes. You know, I'll share one Absolutely. if it's okay. You know, oh, one, one's, sure. one's yeah. called, it's a different kind of thing, but it's very, there are very different ones. One's called Pidyon Haben. Now this is totally Hebrew, Pidyon Haben. Now, this is something that pretty much you would never see mm -hmm. if, you just, if you didn't know the Hebrew or you didn't know that this happens. And this is what it is, but it's mm -hmm. so crucial. It's called the Pidyon Haben mystery, and that's this. In the Bible, it says that every, every firstborn son has to be redeemed. Because in Egypt, you know, they were all redeemed. The firstborn son was redeemed by the Passover lamb. So everybody's indebted to God. So it says firstborn male has to be redeemed. Now, if a firstborn lamb is born, it's offered up as a sacrifice. The firstborn lamb is always, the first, always offered up, but a firstborn son was, it says it'll be for me. So what, what that was taken is that originally God said that all the firstborn sons are to come into my ministry. They're going to be belong to the temple. They're going to help the priests. They're going to be part of it. That's what it's saying. But later on, God says, you know what? Instead, I'm going to take the whole tribe of Levi in place of the firstborn sons. That's how Levi became the, the ministers. Uh -huh. They came in place. Mm -hmm. So then God says, but when every son is born, you have to re still redeem the son. It's kind of like you're ransoming him back from the temple. You're ransoming him back from the, the, you know, the service of the Lord. And so they would pay a price. This is from the Bible. It was called Pidyon Haben. Every son who was born, this is every firstborn in the Bible, they, a price of shekels of silver would be given to the temple so that they would be, in a sense, free. Okay, now get that. Mm -hmm. All the time, all the, including Jesus, Messiah, Yeshua. When he was born, he was the firstborn son. So he had to be redeemed by giving shekels of silver to the temple. So there. So, okay, now, now listen. Now listen here. What happened before Jesus could die as the sacrifice? Judas, Judas was paid a price by the priests. So the priests now, for the first time in the history of the Bible in the world, the priests were returning the money. They were returning the silver that had been paid to redeem the son. And so they're giving the money back. Therefore, for the first time, the priests are purchasing a man. They are purchasing the firstborn son back. So by giving this back, it means that now Messiah is coming under the dominion of the priests and he's going to be now, it also means that when you did that, you know, the Levites came to replace the firstborn sons. Well, now the firstborn son is coming back. He's going to replace the Levites. The Le he's going to replace the whole Levitical priesthood. It's going back. Not only that, but, you know, now it means he has no redemption. He has no, there's no ransom for him anymore. He's the one who's going to become the ransom. If a, if a lamb was the firstborn the lamb would be offered up. Well, he's not only the firstborn son, he's the lamb. So now when they, pay, when they gave back those shekels of silver, he now is going to become the lamb who dies for the sins offered up by the priests of Israel. Not only that, not only that, but remember what happened before he died. He was put on the, before the people, one man, Messiah, and one man, criminal, Barabbas. Barabbas. And we all know Barabbas, bad guy. That's how we know Barabbas. Well, they choose, they choose Barabbas, so Barabbas gets free, and Messiah comes. Well, here, but here's the thing. Messiah became the ransom for Barabbas, but what is Barabbas? Barabbas is a Greek name of a Hebrew name. What's his real name? Here's a mystery with Barabbas. Barabbas wasn't just a criminal. Barabbas' name is bar -Abba. It means the son of the father. Wow. <laughs> He's the son.